Hello, my name is Brendan Milos, and I am doing the video interview for Painting Drama 1 Generation 4. I'm super self-motivated, uh, I pick things up fast, and I'm always looking for something new to learn. Uh, I'm a very hard worker. I've always had a job since I was 15. Uh, I moved to California by myself when I was 18, uh, and while I was going to school, uh, art school, I was uh, at one time I had uh, two jobs, a weekend job and a weekday job while doing school full time. The thing that I struggle with the most is that uh, as someone who uh, works really hard and is uh, you know, wants to make a difference. Sometimes I think uh, I have trouble uh, letting go and just, uh, you know, trusting others to get the job done. I have a, I have a post-it note at work uh, that says, hey, you know, focus on your job, let it go. Uh, and that kind of helps me if I get into a headspace or have some tendencies that, uh, you know, I fall into any bad habits or anything like that. My big dreams are to travel, and make art. If I live with my wife somewhere in Japan or Europe or something like that, that I'd be able to still uh, paint, uh, be an artist, and uh, provide income that way. You know, it's wonderful that we have uh, the internet, that we can digitally paint because we can, you know, as artists, that means we can do our job from literally anywhere. And as long as I'm able to uh, keep working on my art, I'm happy. You know, that's, that's a dream in and of itself. Well, that's that's tough, man. I actually I challenge anybody to look back ten years ago and uh, and basically, if they could have predicted that they are in the spot that they're in now, kudos to them, man, because it's it's really life throws you curveballs. Well, first of all, I I hope that it looks like I've spent ten years when I'm 39. It looks like oh wow, this person spent a decade painting their butt off, and uh, that it shows in in the images that I make and the stories I tell with with. Uh, with my paintings. And as far as my career, I mean, I, I really love to make games. I, I wouldn't do anything else. Making art, making games, uh, there's just that level, you know, as a kid, I was I was captivated uh, playing games because I was interacting with the art someone made. So as long as I can still work in games, uh, because it is very competitive, it's very difficult, and I still get to make art, you know, ultimately I'm, I'm happy doing that. Um, and hopefully I keep getting better. Uh, who is your favorite Muppet? Um, does Yoda count? No, y Yoda's not a Yoda's not a Muppet. All right. Um, who are those old guys? You know the the two old guys. There's there's these. I think it's like Statler and something. Statler and Waldorf. That's it. So the the old guys. Uh, they 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 do that bit where they sit up and they're kind of heckling and they're just being uh, kind of jerks and everything. I I don't know. It's it's something about them that uh, I just I like the. Uh, kind of the crotchety old man thing uh, that they have, and I don't know, they're sarcastic, and I, I kind of like that. Wish I could answer Yoda, though. It was kind of a Muppet, right? This is great. This is like a, this is like an interview question. Um, this is an interview question. So basically, I spend 17 hours a week, I devote, and I, I track this. Uh, I spend 17 hours a week to improve myself as an artist, to make time to paint, to make time to uh, do demos, to study, uh, and for personal projects. Uh, and this is outside of my jobs that I have. Yes, jobs, I have two jobs, so it's very, very busy. I'm very busy. I'm a big advocate of working with reference, and I try not to guess if I don't know something. So I do observe and study observation a lot, but as far as the actual fundamentals and sketching and things like that, I probably spend about a third of that, so like five hours a week, doing sketches from observation, painting material studies. I mean, even just today on my lunch break, I uh, did sketching for an hour with some coworkers. It's about building that mental library. I feel like when you're designing something visually, you're trying to make a statement either about a character personality or the environment someone is in in a game and really you want to be thinking you don't want your cognitive load kind of like what your what your mind's thinking of to be caught up with the mechanics of oh which color do I choose here how do I paint a grass texture you want to be thinking about why is why why am I doing the things I'm doing what is that going to make the audience or the player feel uh, in the games industry, there's a saying, uh, fail fast, fail often. And what that means is that oftentimes uh, it's you just you go through prototypes, you go through projects, and you have to kind of fearlessly just plow forward, get something playable, and then play it, 
get some feedback on it and just be honest with yourself is that you know it, you know is this working and if it's not cool there's a million other ideas we can make more things i think the worst thing as an artist is to be afraid of, of failure because if, if you're afraid of failing you're not going to try and if you don't try uh then you're not going to get any better uh, recently i did this so my my most recent kind of pronounced uh, failure, as it were, was I did this water mage portrait, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint it. I'm not going to do an underdrawing. I'm just, I'm just gonna go for it, you know. And uh, so I took a step back after working on it for a couple hours, for a few hours, really, more than, more than I want to admit. And I said, you know what, we're gonna do a drawing. Got my reference, did my studies, did a, a couple drawings, a couple attempts at designing the face. Then finally, when I was happy, went in and, and painted on top. And I think the, the results just, just this huge leap up so for me lesson learned if someone's willing to give you the time of day to actually give you some some real thoughtful criticism that's great first thing I do is I listen and then the next thing I do is I, I dig into their observation and then what I do afterward is I go and I ask another person for feedback and another and another and another until uh, I get a pattern every time that I have applied feedback especially when it's been a pattern of the same type of feedback my art has been better and I think when you work on something you have too much skin in the game you get emotionally attached you lose your ability for that first impression uh, uh, actually, I would say that my biggest fan and my biggest critic is is my wife, and I'm super grateful for that. Uh, she pushes me a lot to uh, to paint more and to not accept, you know, just an okay quality. All right, well, thank you guys so much. Uh, that's my video interview. I hope you learned uh, what you were looking for out of me, and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing all the other video interviews and getting to see the faces uh, and see the artwork of other people. And uh, good luck with making your decision.